Regardless though, I think the real lesson here is that everybody goes through this stuff. I think just we as humans just do that. Um, and that's okay. It's not about whether or not it happens. It's more, I think, how you choose to handle it. Jordan has an interview today. Looking awfully spiffy. Give us a little runway. How about that? That works. <laughs> Your hair looks cute. Thank you. since 2006. That's when I first started watching it. Um, I actually stumbled upon Philly D, like, I, apparently, I didn't even realize it at the time, but that was like right when he started his channel. You know, being on the platform for so long, I've always known that I wanted to be on YouTube. I didn't really know what that meant. You know, I didn't, you know, this, is, this has been forever. I could probably even find you like one of my first videos back in like, I don't know what it would have been, like 2008 maybe, or 2009. Welcome to the pilot episode. So today I was browsing around on the New York Times' technology section. I found something pretty interesting. Apparently there's something that's kind of like Y2K out, only for Twitter. It's called Twitpocalypse. So what is it? Um, it was so cringy, but, you know, I've always wanted to do this, and it's taken me since then, so basically... 10 years uh, to really feel confident, feel confident, feel confident. I just feel like my work is so boring. <laughs> You're so boring. Yes, it is. You know, Unless I got so fucking drag queens like s strung up by their toes with like <laughs> Jason masks <laughs> on. Nobody gives a shit about my work. <laughs> Not true. It's... There's things we po when you've been in charge of the thing we posted on Instagram. Those have been like the most well received things, like your champagne shoot and. Stuff like that. You have really good concepts. Our our stairway shoot. You've done really good stuff. They're just not you. You're a different, you know, being all together. You're creative in different ways, I'm sure, that they would never be able to do. I don't want you to second guess what you've done, you know? You don't need to be judging yourself like that. They're different people. We're not measured on the same, like, scale, you know? You've done things that they never have, and never, I'm sure never will. I'm, you've done that so much that nobody has. Don't need to be so hard on yourself. All you can do is try to improve. Because of you, I mean, look already from like, you know, everything you've done for me within between ranches, not just from this week. I'm talking like the past, you know, eight years, how much you've come through for me. And by being there for me, you've helped me be able to produce the things that I want to. That I would never have been able to without you. 
you know, you continue to be more than just a photographer. And I think that's, you know, one of your, like, best defining traits is that you just want more and to do more. One of my goals for this year was to automate Lux Everlasting, uh, which is my portrait and wedding photography business. A main aspect of that is to kind of get a, 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 a nice sales funnel go going where the only re real way I have to be super involved is uh, on, you know, replying to emails, uh, you know, contact inquiries from couples. Uh, so. Someone thinks it's uh, dinner time. Come here. You want fed? And in part of that process, I was uh, kind of getting my email automation set up. And through this, I wanted to see are any other photographers doing this? Uh, you know, I know there's a lot of like kind of more entrepreneur or like service industry style businesses, like bloggers and whatnot, that kind of have a email opt in option on their website. Uh, I mean, you see them everywhere, but I wanted to see if there were any photographers that had them. Um, so I logged on, uh, into, you know, on on Wedding Wire and searched some wedding photographers to see if anybody would have any. And uh, instead of getting my, well, I did get an answer to the question, which was no. But in addition to that, I also started spiraling because I saw so many amazing photographers on there. I mean, for lack of a better word, it made me feel like insecure I guess you know I just didn't feel like I am as good of a photographer as I want to be let alone you know I've done the best wedding work that I'd like to do it's just so interesting how this stuff can how, how like creativity and like being an artist can kind of turn on you I guess uh, I just was I am still in just like a little bit of a hole with it now because it just makes me wonder, I'm just like second guessing everything, it's just been a, a downward spiral. Did you feed Nova this morning? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Regardless though, I think the real lesson here is that everybody goes through this stuff. I'm sure I'm not the only, you know, marketing, branding, person that has gone through this, at least I'm ho I hope not. I'm sure there's plenty of other photographers that know that they're photographers, know that they are amazing, know that all, you know, that they, that that's what their calling is and what they're meant to do, but they still just second guess themselves. I think just we as humans just do that. Um, and that's okay. It's not about whether or not it happens. It's more, I think, how you choose to handle it. And I can have my little, you know, panic attack, you know, mental breakdown moment, but at the end of the day, I just can't let myself stay in that state. I have to pull myself up. I have to get out of bed, get back to the computer, continue where I left off, and just push through. Push through with my original plan, which is to get back to the automation process with Lux Everlasting so that I can focus more diligently on my personal brand that's what i'm going to do that's moving forward it's okay if you feel this way is what i'm saying if you ever feel lost or insecure or that you know you just don't know what you're doing that's okay just keep pushing forward going back to my last video like if it turns out that you aren't actually meant for it you know, you'll you'll know. It won't be like a, well, this or that, you know, I don't really know kind of thing. Like, you will know. You know, I've done plenty of things in my life that I've pursued that I knew that that was not my calling once I got a little bit into it. So, I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. Right, Nova? Mostly I should probably focus on feeding my cat at the moment since it's, it's not even nine yet. You hate me. So, 
after my little miniature breakdown there, I, I went for a run and uh, just to clear my head. Sorry for kind of the sweaty look and the bad audio, but I just wanted to make a really quick clip and say, you know, on the run, I kind of had a little bit moment of introspection and really thinking about it, like, I should not even be comparing myself to these people, you know, regardless of anything else what I'm doing, no matter what the field is, no matter kind of where I'm going, what direction I'm going in. You know, we've all heard it a million times, comparing yourself to others is just not a good idea for so many reasons. But one that really stuck with me and kind of popped in my head on this run was that I don't know what the, those other photographers' struggles are. I don't know what they've done. I don't know anything about them. I'm just looking at kind of this like perfect profile and just seeing, wow, these images are incredible, and I do appreciate them, and I'm happy for them, but, you know, at the same time, I feel, I feel worse about myself for it, and that's just completely irrational. You know, I have no idea what they went through to work to getting those good of images. Uh, I, I don't know anything about them, really. I just know they're great pictures, and it just needs to be left at that. Appreciate them. Be inspired by them. Don't let it hurt me. So you should do the same. Have a good night, guys.